it, uh, it, it is certainly a dynamic time, and that, that's an understatement. Um, it is so different than a year ago. Um, I think we'll all take that light at the end of the tunnel or whatever expression coming out of the woods, whatever it is, um, we'll take where we are. And you described it appropriately. We used to describe that the economy has been uh, had, was put in a medically induced coma. And it's come out of that. And it's a little groggy to start, but it is taking off now. It was a little groggy to take off. It, it, it's taking off. And it's about a quarter ahead of where we would have thought it would have been at this point. I mean, we're almost back to GDP-wise where, where we dropped off. So we've almost made it all back. Um, you mentioned the growth rates, growth rates that we have not seen in decades. So that is the, the, the good news. The bad news is we started at a low level. The good news is that growth is, is coming firing back, and there's still more in there. Um, you did mention the different types of infrastructure, whether it's social or physical or environmental infrastructure. We don't know what will get passed, but let's say you know, half of it gets passed. Is that worth, I don't know, half a percent of GDP growth for the next few years? Um, if you think about the service economy, think about the rest of the growth that's left in the service economy, that whether it's entertainment, whether it's restaurants and travel, that there's still fuel in that tank for growth to come from there. So you get there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic about economic growth. But then you go and you hang out, and I hang out a lot with the fixed income team here. Um, and uh, when they see a lot of growth, they start thinking, okay, like, Fiscal spending, a lot of growth, um, easy monetary inflation. So clients are hearing a lot more news about potential inflation out there. And so, you know, should they be worried about inflation? I think it matters if you're a portfolio manager versus you're investing for 20 years. And for your clients, this is going to be transitory, probably not worth stressing out about. That there's reasons to believe that we're going to have inflation in the short run. And uh, the Fed may even want, even wants that inflation. But you see, uh, you, I already mentioned, you know, the fiscal spending. You're going to, you have easy monetary policy. We all feel the supply shocks, right? We read the stories about ships that can't be unloaded, containers in the wrong spot, et cetera, et cetera. But we, we feel those supply shocks. Um, there's labor imbalances as people come back into the, into the economy. So reasons for short-term inflation. But the reason why I would say, hey, this is a transitory thing on inflation, not a long-term concern, you have to think of some of the elements. Is that, Greg, is that fiscal spending, is it permanent, right? Are we going to continue to spend this way? Because if you're going to continue to spend this way, then that may change expectations and Inflation's all about expectations in so many ways. Um, do, you, uh, do you think those supply shocks will continue? We don't. I think you're going to see a lot of them came from consumption pattern changes. I think people didn't go to restaurants, but they shopped on Amazon. They weren't going to the movies, but they were buying goods that had to be shipped to the U.S. So the supply shock changes should make their way out of the system as people consume more soft goods, if they consume more entertainment and travel, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing that when you think about inflation, what undermines inflation each and every year is technology. I think about technological innovation. When every year we get more capabilities, more functionality for every dollar we spend around technology. And for everything that's sold, technology is a bigger part of that good. So technology will continue to undermine. Globalization. Unless you think globalization is going to reverse and go back the other way, globalization gives you plenty of slack in the economy that should keep prices down. So there's many reasons to think, okay, inflation long term should stay down. Do you do anything different with your portfolio? We'll say there is short term inflation. This may not, you guys may not agree with this, Greg, but I would say like, don't don't try to play it. That's that's market timing. Like if you're saying, okay, well, I'll just buy a little bit of Bitcoin. That's my hedge or a little bit of gold. I don't know, like, do you know, like, did you get in early enough? Do you know when to get out? Because these are assets that if you're planning for inflation, they're going to go up and come back down. Um, why not just hold your equities? If the economy continues to grow and inflation sticks around, you'll benefit in your equities from that growth. 
and equity, the companies can still pass through that pricing. So even if I'm wrong, having the equity should protect you over the long run. So less of a risk there. Now, Greg, um, I did mention equities in there, so I think it would be, hey, I'm telling people to hold on to their equities, and I know a bunch of your clients are probably out there going, yeah, but at what price? Um, everyone's seen, uh, you know, we keep hitting highs, you see valuations, especially in the U.S. And look, prices, the, the valuations are high. Um, when we... We will, our team looks at equity valuations here. We use a, uh, a cyclically, cyclically adjusted PE model, so a CAPE model. And then we compare where the, the current PE reading is to where a fair value would be if you adjusted it for prevailing interest rates. When we go through that calculation, we would tell you that U.S. equities are one and a half standard deviations above fair value. That's expensive. But it's, it's, it's clumpy. It's not universal that way. There are other areas that if you look at value, you know, value stocks have been doing well this year, but value stocks have underperformed for so long. You look at the, the gap between growth and value, like value, we haven't seen a gap like this since 1999. So you have to go to the dot-com era. And value did really well after that. You also look outside the U.S., International equities, like they're what we'd call fairly valued. So, Greg, we come back and say this is the time for this is really the time for people to have a globally diversified portfolio, not to get really concentrated saying, hey, you know, it's all about tech right now. Now, this is where you want that that because valuations matter, you want to be diversified globally, and and you know let it play out from there so hopefully that wasn't too long of an answer but it give you some insight of how we're thinking about it here at vanguard